Building champions in Raid Shadow Legends is not easy. I'm one of those players that has reached level 90 and I've been playing every day since the game has launched. With all those battles fought, I have a decent understanding on how to build certain champions and with my resource management efficiency approach and budget builds in mind, I want to share what my champions looked like after all this time in 2021. But before I get to that, here's a quick reminder on how you can support this channel for full-time content creation. I do do play other gotcha games, for example, a Summoner's Glory, the only game that I know where you can actually help other players summon to get better drops. You can enter the promo code BGE during character creation to get free in-game loot. Or this other game that I can afford to play every day, and this one really feels like a mobile game because you have instant battles. You can enter the promo code Bionic before level 15 to get free in-game loot. All download links will be in the description and comment section. Today we have Asyl of the Drakes, another fantastic prize that you get for simply playing this game. You will get her after six months. Now she came later for me. I was already at the end game when I got Asyl of the Drakes. So my perception of how useful she was to carry your account might be different than yours, but you still need her quite a bit in the end game as you will see in today's build. Her kit is fantastic. Basically, we have a heal on the passive. We have a revive. We have an AOE stun. We have a decreased speed and term reduction reduction on the A1, but that is not the only thing she can do. She has decent multipliers, which means that she can hit relatively hard. 3.5 times her defense on the A1, 1.55 times her defense times 2 on the A2 for those two hits, basically. So remember, guys, all of these builds will be accessible on my guides, which is on Google Sheets. You guys can access this at any time. We'll come back to this after we're done with the build. But now first, let's go check out the Doom Tower, which is where I use her the most and doing the floors is one thing i might have a good team to do that she's not on this team but trust me she is still an mvp to get through the entire doom tower if it wasn't for Sal the drakes i wouldn't be able to complete the last boss here so she is one big part of this puzzle this is not the boss that i farm i mainly farm grithion for this rotation round she's also in there so again very important with the stats that you're going to see today she's also in the nether spider team she was was in the previous rotation as well she continues to be so i would say that overall for the doom tower this is priority number one then we have the dungeons she's currently not on any of my four teams that is kind of normal because again i have speed teams and she is not required for that it doesn't make her useless Perhaps for the upcoming level 25 dungeons, I might require her. And I tried to build her with that in mind. So the stats you're going to see in a second are in fact trying to prepare me for what is to come. Then we have the arena where I also don't really use her. Much like the dungeons, I got her after I already had sort of like speed teams with Arbiter lead for me to farm these. I did, however, use her a little bit for the tag arena. And when I did use her in there, I had a build in mind Then I tried trying to replicate this as of today to see if with these stats is it let's say good enough for gold 4 I know it's good enough for gold 3 gold 4 tag arena but I really wanted to see how it was going to look so we're going to do a quick run there's a few different ways you can do this if you don't have Lydia right now that is a big part of the puzzle but I suppose you could use something like Vergum car again you just want high resistance I think that's really important uh Tormin is also pretty clutch for a team like this which is why I run him in there that is my counter to the fast arbiter teams and still to today two of my tag arena teams are built like this so i only have one speed team anyway let's go into this fight to see how this looks and uh, again we gotta hope for some kind of like freeze here from the uh Tormin. we get three of them we do take a little bit of damage from that hegemon but then we can go into our combo let's see if we can pull it off so aoe decrease defense and weaken we provoke we take a little bit of a hit right there, and then we AoE stun, hopefully get control of enough of them. We take that Trunda down, the Rotos is down, hopefully she doesn't get to revive them all. Nope, because we've got Lydia, and so that's it, right? So that's a simple concept, but guys, if you're just still struggling to perhaps come up with a slow, tanky team, Salda Drakes is fantastic to be on that type of team. Now we can go over her gear and her masteries. As you can see, I have her in a relentless set. We're not reinventing the wheel here. It's more about the total stats that I have for everything to work and for her to be well balanced on my account. 
That is the whole purpose of these builds, updated builds for 2021, is that I don't need to shuffle things around anymore, and I'm quite happy with that. So the reason I went for these stats right here is because of the hard Doom Tower, and I actually show you guys real quick here. So this is the current rotation. We have Irgoth with the two Eternal Priest, and then the resistance of the two, uh, or the adds basically is 230. Their accuracy is 230, but the boss has 350 accuracy. So you do want to have as high as possible resistance so that you don't get crowd control. So you can start putting the AOE stuns on those adds and then hopefully gain control of that fight. If we also look at the previous rotation with Sorath, it was kind of the same concept here. She was on that team as well and she was pretty clutch for that. So again, the whole point of this here is to emphasize her to take more turns for the heals and also not to be crowd control as much as possible but also to apply those stuns when you need them all right so for total stats we have roughly 220 speed i'll tell you right now it's a little bit too slow when i tested her for the first time against irgoth on the test server she had 250 speed I just could not afford to do that here again. Then for the rest, we have 380 resistance. That's all right, 293 accuracy. I would love to have a little bit more, but it's getting pretty hard to squeeze out more stats on this champion. We have 4.1K defense, sorry. And then here are the individual pieces real quick. Basically speed and accuracy and resistance. We do have two pieces of resistance. I just kind of finished this shield today. Overall, it's not the best shield, but you know what? I was going for that accuracy and resistance, so I like it. We have a defense percent for the chest piece, accuracy, speed boots. Obviously, we do have a resistance banner. I suppose these could all be the cleansing uh, accessories that might be even better on her. I'm not too concerned about um her getting more of the stun because her a1 is also pretty important so i kind of would prefer to do just cleansing across the board then we have flat defense right here and we have hp all the skills are obviously done and then for the masteries we are able to work with war master i think that's also pretty important i used to have her in unshakable to have more resistance but now I was able to go to this right there. And of course, just trying to emphasize her ability to um, support your team with Harvest Despair, uh, counter attack if possible, and also take a little bit more turns with Cycle of Revenge. And finally, here's the summary and a couple options or notes for you guys. Number one, she's a priority number two on my account as of right now, which means that she doesn't have the best relentless gear. I kept that for other more important champions, for example, my clan boss champions, which means that she could even be a little bit better, uh, perhaps even faster, like I said, 250 plus, but also perhaps deal a little bit more damage. But for what I'm using her right now, which is mainly Doom Tower, I'm not too concerned with that. But with the upcoming level 25 dungeons, I tried to build her as a more of a support champion. And if you um, look at the stats that we have on the current bosses in the hard doom tower, that is what you have to expect for the level 25 dungeons. So I think that my stats for now are going to be sufficient for that. All right, so here's the quick recap. We do have Relentless. As I've said, I tried a couple different sets. I really think that Relentless overall is the way to go on her. And for the arena, I showed you guys a potential build. Certainly not something I am currently using, but it could work. And finally, here's the Great Hall in case you guys want to compare stats. There you have it. Updated build for Sal the Drakes 2021. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you later.